Okay, so today I'm talking to, I'd say, legend of the Irish uh, betting scene, Johnny Deneen. Thanks very much for taking some time out, Johnny, especially at short notice to speak to us. Um, first of all, I mean, people change, um, people don't really like certain terms. So how would you describe what you do for a living? Look, I, I suppose f f fellas will think that you, because you get a little extra income from certain things like 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 doing a podcast or, or maybe a bit of rental, that you're not really a professional gambler as such, I suppose. But I'd like, I look, I don't care what people think of me really, but I probably think I, I am a probably a professional gambler because the, the few bits and pieces that I do earn don't have any big bearing on, on, on my uh, on my yearly um outcome as such so i kind of need to win gambling to, to to make a living to be honest and how long have you been making a living from gambling um well i i, I like i bet from from since i was knee high to a grasshopper but 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 i'd say i, I was about 27 or so before i really grasped it i was like what whatever you'd like to call it in the wilderness or whatever for for since I was tw like I didn't really know what was happening or it took a, it takes a long time to to get the hang of it really it's not the thing that you, you kind of inherit overnight so I'd say from twenty seven till I'm fifty two now so probably twenty five years and uh, but but saying that this year is fine for me but but what year is two thousand and nine the last four years I found it very difficult found it very difficult. I, I, I never lost until I lost, uh, I've lost two out of the last four years. And basically oh, put the four years together, I haven't really made any money. Like I'm only just standing still as such like, you know what I mean? So what I won the other two years only only rubbed out the other the two losing ones. But up to that, I was winning like con on a consistent basis. No, I'm winning this year. So I, I, I'm happy the way this year is going. Very happy actually. So, um, but only for having a few quid put away from the good days, I'd be out of business. Like because of the last four years, where I actually made no money, bar a few little rentals and things like that that I was getting in. You know. Okay, so I mean, I was going to talk about your gambling a bit more later, but now you've you've brought that up. I mean, assuming that you've you know you said you've got a bit of money saved back, do you you know how if somebody starts to lose, you know, two times in four years, do you start doubting yourself a bit? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, the, the the one different thing was when I started losing as a bookie, I I knew I was beat. You know what I'm saying? And I was I was willing to put my hands up and say I'm finished here. Whereas in the punting side of it, I felt that I wasn't doing a lot wrong, and um, I could see myself turning it around. You know what I mean? That kind of way. Uh, like I remember going back in. 2011 or say probably 12 years ago I didn't win much either on the year do you know what I mean I won very very little it, it wouldn't have covered our expenses at home even you know that kind of way and I was thinking like am I am I washed up here but, but I did turn it around like for the next six or seven eight years and started making making a decent living again but even the last four years even though I haven't won any money I haven't really I haven't been doing a lot wrong and, and I, I've I, I had it but I still have the self belief that I could still win punting. Whereas at the end of my bookmaking career, I knew I couldn't win bookmaking, making money. Now, I, I've been been lucky enough to be going over to Ireland for the last couple of years in the betting rings, speaking to people, and everybody that um, mentions you, they sort of do it in hushed, reverential tones and say, "Johnny Danina, the best card in the whole of Ireland." Would you Would you agree with that? Look, everyone has a bit of a, has a bit of a card and, and and a bit of an opinion in that, but. Look, the, 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 once the Betfair really grabbed a hold, the, the, the cards started to disappear because as, as somebody with, with a bit of with a bit of valuable information doesn't doesn't need to doesn't need to inform you anymore because they don't need you because they can do their own thing on the exchanges without using maybe a fellow with a with a bookmaker's license as such, you know. So if I was putting on for people, um, or maybe laying horses for people or backing against horses for whatever. It, 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 of course, it would it would have been valuable, but but a lot of that stuff dried up because they didn't need to tell me anymore what they were doing because they could do it off their own bat. And so, why would you in, include anybody else when when I wasn't bringing anything to, to the table as such in an instance like that? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of that stuff dried up, and you you you, you were getting your card marked from the bet from the exchanges, the same as everybody else. And but 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 what I found my point of, from 
bookmaking was that when at the end of my bookmaking career that the exchange was 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 knew a lot more than I did anyway absolutely and and that's the reason one of the main reasons why I packed it in because like after a while you had to admit defeat to the whoever is you, you didn't know who was betting on the exchanges for starters and basically you had to say look these guys know more than me I'm out of my league here it's time for me to leave the table okay now we want to talk about especially about your bookmaking career and stuff a bit later on but you told me a bit about yourself uh, yesterday so I want to get back to the the beginning now um you told me your mum and dad were both in the teaching uh, profession, but they enjoyed yeah. going to the, the horses and the dogs. And I assume that that's where you got your love of it initially. Well, my, yeah, my mum and dad were both teachers. Like my, my, my dad was a maths teacher, but my mum had no interest whatsoever in, in anything to do with horses. You know what I mean? But my, my dad used to go at the weekends, the dogs of a Friday. We, we, we had a dog track local to us as well. So a lot of guys used to congregate around the dog track kids and when at when they were when they were like 10 and 11 years of age and yeah, that kind of gets you into the betting side of it and and my dad used to go to the dogs we used to go to point to points of a sunday like that was part of a, the, the weekend as such and i kind of quickly got in, interested in the in the in the in the betting side of it and whatever and and at maybe 13 14 years of age i would start at clarking for bookies when they were stuck maybe at a point to point or at a dog meeting if they had no one to clark from I, I could I learned how to clerk like writing the the bits in the book and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, look from t- 13, 14, I, I mean I could I could work maybe two nights a weekend, Friday and Saturday night at at, at the dogs and a Sunday at the point the points. So I had I I, I kind of had access to money at at an early age. Not like not a lot of money, but like I, I might earn a hundred pounds for the weekend, which is a lot for a thirteen or fourteen year old. You know what I mean? That kind of way. So and invariably I'd probably lose it betting away myself at that time you, you could gamble when you were 14 and 15 years of age no, nobody like, like that's all changed now but no, nobody took any notice of it but it, it, it was kind of ingrained I got to like it and I got to go to the races and 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 the dogs and one thing that really fascinated me was the bookies um I remember going to the races and you, you'd look at I mean uh, you look at somebody like Sean Graham do you remember Sean Graham yeah yeah like You'd be mesmerized watching him working. I was anyway. I was a young fellow looking up and, and he he priced the board and his figures were immaculate. And you you had this like mini Wall Street kind of a thing going on. You had fellas running for him and, and they running here, there, and everywhere, back and back horses. He was doing all the business as such at the races. Davy Meehan was another fantastic layer at the time. He was he was a Dublin bookmaker, um. But I, I was looking up at these guys like in awe, looking at these. I'd say like I suppose it was it was a kind of a thing where I, at fourteen years of age I was saying like like a lot of guys wanted to be soccer players maybe or whatever. I kind of looked up to these guys and they'd say like I want to be like that someday. Do you know that kind of way? And I was interested more in looking at these guys when I was going with my dad to the races and studying them than actually watching the races as such. You know what I mean? I found that part of the f- fascinating. And another guy uh, who used to make a book at the Dogs and Clark Liam Cashman, he had a string of betting shops around the South. Um, he was a fantastic operator. Fantastic operator. He was, he was could control the whole crowd at the Greyhound track as well. He covered, he, like, he, he worked at Cork Dog track for years and he was the, he was the king. You know what I mean? A bit like, um, Ted Hagerty now in the dogs in Shelburne Park. Like I clerked for Ted a few times. Like Ted is what a fantastic operator he is. Like, you know what I mean? But again, he was like a, a fellow conducting an orchestra. Everyone w- w- was watching him. And, and it's the same look when, when you used to go, everybody used to watch Sean Graham. Everybody used to watch fellas like Davey Mead, Liam Cashman at the dogs in Cork and, uh, and Heg- Ted Hagerty at the dogs in, in Shelburne Park. And, and like Ted is still going. Like, you know what I mean? After all those years, he's still doing it. Like what, what he was probably... The, the best bookie I ever clerk for now, to be honest. And what what was your what was your dad's attitude to betting? I mean, you say he's a maths teacher. Did he sort of explain to you the figures of what you're up against trying to win gambling? What was it? No, no. You, you, oh, oh, he was just a casual gambler. He wasn't a big better at all. You know what I mean? He, he just liked having a bet. He was he was like gambling like in in handy money. He still does bet. Like he's eighty five now and he still bets away. But he was never a big gambler. He used to play poker in the pub on the way home. All you know, handy money sort of stuff. But uh, he never explained to me about anything. I had to learn the hard way. Like, I was probably betting from 13 to... Probably, I'd say, I was betting 13, 14 years before I knew what to do properly. Do you know what I mean? I was... like in I would... At 20, 21 years of age or whatever, 
I'd spend most weekends, I couldn't go anywhere because I wouldn't have a shilling in my pocket. Do you know what I mean? The same I as do. most people. Really. I do. I've done that myself. Um, yeah. so when, when you were working clerking, I mean, what did you learn apart from obviously how to clerk? But did you sort of start to grasp, you know, how it, how the bookies, it was in their favour and that sort of thing? You know, even though you were still losing, did you get that, start to get the, the, the gist of it? Well, I, I, I suppose I, I, I learned from... I worked for a lot of bookies, big ones, small ones, um, fellas with plenty of money, fellas with no money. Do you know what I mean? And they all look, they all approached it kind of differently. Um, I didn't see anything from any any of them that, that I didn't think that I could that couldn't do as well as, if not better. If you know what I'm saying. Some of the guys that I worked for didn't have a clue what they were doing in my eyes anyway. Do you know what I mean? And like once you get into your twenties, you could see that quite clearly. Like at thirteen or fourteen, you you wouldn't really understand it, but. When you're 21 or 22, you could see. I mean, I could see fellas laying favourites, but they had no reason for doing it. Do you know what I mean? They laid them because they were favourites, that kind of thing. And I just knew that that was not the way to make a book anymore. Anyway, I didn't think it was. And once it got to a stage, I was in was clerking for fellas for five, maybe five or six years, five years, and I just said to myself, I, I said it to a, a guy, a friend of mine, Gary Lawler. He was he was working Seamus Mulvaney, and. Uh, I said to him, I was thinking of going out on my own. And he said, look, do you know what? He said, look, he said, you have much to lose because if it does, if it goes wrong, you can always go back clerking. So I said, you know what? It's probably right. That's not bad advice. So I said, I'll have a go off it then. You know that kind of way? Yeah. That, I mean, I was sort of in the betting ring at the time you were talking about. And it was quite, a, um, thinking outside the box, thinking all the bookmakers used to get the favourite in. Yeah. Yeah. Differently, like, uh, 20 years ago. Yeah, th that's the way they just operate. They'd lay the favourite and they'd have the second favourite to take her, all this kind of stuff. I mean, I, I was going home every night saying, look, seven races, four favourites win every day. I can't, that can't be the right way to approach it anyway. Do you know what I mean? There's got to be races where you where, where you duck and there's got to be races where you where you double up, maybe. You know that kind of way? Where you, like, you just don't stand the, the, the favourite in, the, in every race for the same amount of money. I could not operate like that anyway myself. You know what I mean? If when I was doing it, I just pick my, my goals and, and have a go. I'd back a favourite if I needed needed to back one, lay one if I needed to one, whatever, stay out of a race if I thought there wasn't much of an edge in it or either way, I had no strong opinion. But but these guys were betting in every single race, had no opinion in any race as far as I could see. I, I know they had most of them had no opinion. And to me, that was not the way to, the, the, the game was evolving and, and that was not the way to keep at it anyway. Most of these guys didn't finish up bookmaking either. Well, I didn't either, so, but, 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 so my system didn't work either but, <laughs> in the finish. But my, I kind of outgrew my, I, I was a kind of a gambling bookie and once the Betfair came in, that put away the gambling bookie in my opinion anyway. Okay, we'll talk about your gambling uh, as a bookie in the next part. Okay.